I'm going to show you three ways that you can save space on your hard drives from your Final Cut Pro libraries. You may have noticed after you finished your project, exported the video, that the library is quite large. I've had some be 100 gigabytes or more. I always thought this was normal and I was saving them along with all my archive footage. Turns out I didn't need to be wasting all that extra space. Those are just render files. It's a cache and we can delete them. The first method for cleaning up your Final Cut Pro library is called Final Cut Pro Diet. What it allows you to do is to eliminate unnecessary and redundant space on your hard drives. So here we are in my project folder. This is the Final Cut Pro library and this is the amount of space that it's taking up. Now, while that's not a lot, this is not the biggest project I've ever done. Um, it is a significant amount that I do not need to hang on to. So all I do is open up the Final Cut Pro diet and I just drag the library into it. It opens up this window. If I go down to the settings, I can choose what I want it to remove, unnecessary files to remove. So here I will erase the render files, the transcoded media and proxies, analysis files, and the temporary folders because I don't need to keep these. These will not damage or ruin the edit timeline. It will keep everything intact. This information that it's deleting is simply used for playback while editing. So we don't need to hang on to that because we're done with the edit now. When we've selected everything we want, we hit OK, and then we simply just hit Diet. It'll take a few seconds, and it says it's all done, and it says it's dieted 21.3 gigabytes. So you can see here, this is the library now with it dieted, it's only 20.9 megabytes. I use the Final Cut Pro Diet for every single edit that I finish. When it's done, I clear the library out, and then I take the project folder, and I move it off and archive it onto a hard drive because I do edit off of a solid state drive because it's faster. Now it's possible you don't want to spend any money on this program. Now the second method is a way that you can do this manually inside of Final Cut Pro. As usual, once you finish the project and you've exported the video, before you close out the library inside Final Cut Pro is make sure you have the library selected and the project selected. Then you go up to the file menu, come down to delete generated project files. It'll open up this little selection and you can choose everything that you want to delete. So we're going to delete the render files, the optimized media and the proxies. Typically you can do all of these. There'll be nothing wrong with your project afterwards. Don't worry, it'll still be fine. Go ahead and click OK. This will delete everything. So here you can see it's a much smaller size once again, but it's climbing in size. That's because we still have the library open. So it's regenerating those files. And that leads us to the third way to save space on your Final Cut Pro libraries. The third way we're gonna save space is to turn off the auto render. As you can see up here and hear the computer working like a workhorse, right now we have rendering going on in the background. While we can pause it, as soon as we move our cursor through the edit, add another clip to the timeline, or whatever, it's going to start rendering once again because the background render is automatically on in Final Cut Pro. So what we can do to stop it from creating render files is to turn off the auto render. So we come up here into the Final Cut Pro preferences and right here at the top, background render, you simply just turn it off. Now you might be worried that it's not going to do well with playback now because that renders turned off. This is not true. I do this all the time and I never have any issues. I work with 4K footage. I do lots of text graphics and there's a lot of stuff going on in my edits and I never have a problem with playback. And that's all the render files are for is for smooth playback so you can edit easily. If you have a modern computer with enough RAM and storage space for the computer and you edit off of a solid state drive, you should have absolutely no issues with playback. If for some reason there's a portion of your edit that's having some issues with playback, maybe there's frames dropping or it's just kind of skipping along and not doing a smooth playback, you can actually render out a portion of your timeline to be sure to save space from the whole thing being rendered. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say I want to render this section of the video right here. I hit R on my keyboard and I just select the portion that I would like rendered. It's highlighted in yellow. Then all I do is hit Control R and it will render that one little section. So hopefully one or all of these are really helpful solutions for you. If it was helpful, give it a like, consider subscribing, comment down below, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.